sometimes clubs go under the radar and I definitely think that is the case with this golf club. I think what we struggle with as golfers is if a product doesn't fit in a certain stereotype then we struggle a little bit at first but until we see more and more people playing it and it becomes the norm then maybe we start to accept it a little. Now before I reveal what this club is I just want to talk about what are the norms right now for golfers in terms of a golf bag makeup. It's driver, fairway woods, hybrids, irons, wedges, putter. That's pretty much the norm isn't it and we generally move from club to club when we partex move on from one set of irons to the next set of irons they're very much the similar thing stereotypes historical choices the issue i have with that is by making historical choices are we missing out on opportunities to play better golf and enjoy the game and i don't necessarily mean just by scoring better but by hitting better shots making the game a little bit easier and therefore making it a bit more enjoyable. Right, so I wanna ask you a question. It's a bit of a daft one in a way, but you're on a par three, you've just thinned one 150 yards, it's flag eye and you walk off with your par. But don't forget you've just thinned it along the ground. Or you hit a lovely floaty high shot, launch it nice, lands soft, lands on the green and you walk away with your par. Which are you happier with? Or doesn't it make any difference to you? They say there are no pictures on the scorecard, which uh, I know is true, but I like hitting good looking shots. And I think this club in hand, you've just had a sneak peek of it, allows you to make those shots just a little bit more regularly. And what I mean by good looking shots is help with achieving a high launching ball. And these clubs do exactly that. And it's one of the main reasons I class them as being vastly underrated and why I think they would suit a lot of average golfers. It is of course the Cobra T-Rail and although it's only been around for a couple of years, the first time I reviewed this product 18 months or so ago, I was really, really impressed. But yet again, when I talk about stereotypes, it would never get a chance of going in my bag and got slid to one side. And then this year's model again, caught my eye in recent weeks. I gave it a go. Recorded some interesting numbers in terms of data and all those things that I just referred to as being why this product is so good kept resonating back in my brain again. I thought, you know what, this is considerably underrated and should be in a bag of many average golfers. So what we're going to do is go back inside. We'll start into some golf balls. I'll collect a little bit of dry ball data and then we'll put it to the test and see how it performs. And is it really or does it really justify that crown? of the most underrated golf club of 2021. So the question is what makes this the most underrated and not top of the tree in terms of the most popular? And that's basically down to the way it looks. It is as simple as that. Because I keep referring to the norm and stereotypes and it doesn't fit into any of those categories. And as you can see, it's almost like a hybrid. We've come to this category conclusion of hybrid iron. From the top line, it's very much a super game improvement iron. From the bottom sole with the T-rails in, it's very much what you'd see in sort of like almost a half of a hybrid. And then there's the bulbous back end, which once again suggests it's more like that hybrid type. But I think that bulk and mass at the back is where you get the confidence from as the thick top line will. But you really have got to overcome the way this thing looks, first of all, to give it a chance. And that's what's happening, in my opinion. Not enough golfers give this a chance, and therefore it's massively underrated. Right, so we know what the club is, and we know why I think it's so underrated, and also the reasons why I think it's so good in terms of, like I said, mainly high launching, but I think it's got good ball speeds, good performance off what is, like I said, we're going to test the seven iron here today, and we'll use my performance as that barometer. Now, I've tested some dry ball data already this morning, and we're kind of getting, or I'm kind of getting, around an average of just over a 150 carry. So I'm going to set up a little bit of a simulator, uh, 150, and we've got a flag a little bit further left as well at 158. And I'm going to see how uh, I perform, put my money where my mouth is, and see how good this club is. So we'll start off at that sort of closer pin and the thing i really like is the fact that this is just an easy swing i've got a graphite shaft in this a light graphite shaft the bulk and mass behind the ball just seeing that is a what's given me a little bit of confidence to think subconsciously that 
This bit of bulk is going to help get that ball airborne. So therefore, and again, subconsciously, and it's the way I think, it might be the way everybody does, I think it needs less effort, if you like, from my swing. So, first shot. Again, high launching, it's incredibly high. You see the ball coming down, that's just going to finish just right at a flag, we're pin eye, we're bang on the number there. But the other thing is, again, and I talk about the kind of, um, they often refer to categorising irons or a player's iron, and this would be certainly a super game improvement iron. One of the things that they criticise these things for or separate them from is you can't shape the ball. But believe me, we're even sort of hitting draws with this. It's uh, on cue and kind of hitting to the uh, sort of slightly trying to get a little bit more out of it in a longer distance. We'll go for the sort of further right flag, which is sort of 158 and see if we can get this ball even moving a little bit. Ah, it's a super shot, you know. I mean, I literally haven't hit a shot, all mo a bad shot all morning, and as you can see, longer in terms of carry distance, shape the ball just a little bit of right to left on it, but again, just it's so easy to do, and I always say when I'm doing these videos, I confuse myself half the time as to why majority of us want to make this game any more difficult than it is and each time I reach down for a club like this I'm going to hit one more ball while the camera's on we'll go for that easiest shot a little bit of a slight cut you want into that closer pin again this is well this one could go in oh my word I mean that's just like put the clubs in the bag and I think we've uh, with three shots there probably the best three shots I've been able to call on camera for quite some time, but it's performed really, really well. And I think we'll finish off with a final summary, but I think in essence, those three shots have said it all. Yet yeah, not a lot more for me to say, to be honest with you. The performance has been, a, forget the three shots, all morning that we've tested this thing, it's been absolutely superb. And I've got to say, really, really impressed. One thing to add, it sits in a price point of 120 pound a club which is kind of, it's not the top end, it's not the bottom end. And I think effectively you've got a bag of hybrids. So that kind of 120 price for a hybrid would be more than acceptable. You can mix this set up a little bit. You can go, I think from the five iron onwards, you go from the sort of hybrid iron, you can go into the more traditional shaped hybrid. If I'm perfectly honest with you, I don't like that hybrid as much as I do these hybrid irons. So for me, I'd stick with this and I found it just as easy to use the longer irons as I did to use the shorter irons in this kind of style and profile. So it's all about over to you really in your comments down below is are you ready to accept this type of club as being the norm like I said or is it still being dismissed at this stage because it's a little bit alien in its looks because I've got to say in terms of performance it is 100% definitely the most underrated club that we have tested this year anyway as ever thanks for watching stick your comments down below if you've got any hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and the final request is subscribe if you don't already if you like this kind of a content from an average golfer one last thing to say the van that we are filming in today is going to feature quite a lot more and uh, i will tell you in videos to come how that might happen right thank you for watching i'm off see you later